Dick, would you call this moon bounce this morning a complete success? Uh, yes, we definitely think that it was uh, very successful. And we have recorded here the reflected signal as, we, as it was received here at Schenectady. And uh, I'll play it for you, if you will. And the first part you will hear will be the countdown just prior to the speech given by Bob Bischoff at Utica. Okay, let's hear it. This is Bischoff's speech right now, as he's reflecting. He speaks in two and a half second verse to allow for the time delay in coming back from the moon. Look forward to a time in the near future when you will actually be able to clear up this distortion? Well, yes. For instance, we might use more powerful transmitters so that the signal will be much louder than the noise, which you now hear in the background. Also, decreasing this beam width so that only a small portion of the moon is illuminated would considerably clear up the distortion. Is the moon a better satellite than uh, Echo 1? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that the uh, moon being much larger, uh, much more signals hit the moon and are reflected back. However, uh, because of the distortions, which are not present on the Echo balloon, uh, I'd say, all in all, uh, it's a hard question to answer. <laughs> Dick, uh, do you have any other um, uh, moon bounces scheduled in the near future or any other experiments in this line that uh, would make for interesting telling? Well, we have a, we have a continuous uh, study program with AFCRL in uh, Cambridge, uh, whereby we do lunar reflection work principally just about every day to determine coherent bandwidths of the moon. So far as uh, bouncing more voices off the moon, why this remains to be seen. Uh, Brian, is there any relation to this uh, job you did this morning of receiving a, a reflected voice from the moon and the problem we're going to have of receiving voice communications from orbiting uh, manned satellites? Well, yes, there is a relationship. The signal which you heard off the moon was distorted because part of it was returned to our receiver before another part. And when the delay signal and the direct signal add together, the, distor the distortion arises. Uh, recently, we received uh, a signal from the orbiting astronaut uh, of Russia. Uh, Major Gagan. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. And uh, we received his transmission when he was over the Caribbean, and were therefore uh, looking very low at the sky, practically at the horizon. And because the radio signal went through so much of the Earth's atmosphere, it was distorted in the same manner as the lunar signal. Uh, that is, parts of it would travel directly to the receiver, other parts bent by the Earth's atmosphere would arrive somewhat later <coughs> and cause distortion. Mm -hmm. How about when uh, satellites or space vehicles uh, go way out in space? Uh, is that even more of a problem? Uh, well, it's actually less so in one way because with several observatories stationed around the Earth, you would never have to look at the uh, space vehicle at a low altitude. However, because he's further away, you have difficulties of receiver sensitivity. He might fade right back into the cosmic noise. 